Thank you very much for staying. Welcome back to the program. Now, the minority in parliament has challenged a number of claims being made by President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado in his State of the Nation address last Tuesday. The minority, during a debate on the address, raised issues with the president's figures on the country's economic outlook when he took over power. But as expected, the majority defended the president. Joseph Fukubakaku has more. NPP MP for Wenji, Professor Yao Jan Bafo, who moved the motion for the commencement of the debate, claimed the NDC government left the economy in an ugly state. In all these three important sectors, it is clear that the economy that this government inherited from the past government is not only faltering, but it is in very ugly state. But former Deputy Finance Minister Kesela Tofosin disagrees. I was surprised to see, to re after reading through the President's State of the Nation's address, to know that the Speaker, certain economic indicators, key ones, are missing. So, Speaker, whether they were deliberate or not deliberate, so Speaker, I cannot judge. So, Speaker, what we are trying to say here is that if you want Ghanaians to know the true state of the economy, so Speaker, don't pick and choose. So Speaker, give Ghanaians the full indices so that we'll be able to judge exactly what is the true state of the economy. MP for Tamale North, Al Hassan Suheni, challenged claims by the president to have secured 125 million Canadian dollars for his Planting for Jobs initiative. He says the amount was secured by the NDC government before it left power. This 122 million Canadian dollars was secured by the previous administration. This is the budgetary support that has been coming from the Canadian government. And indeed, there is record to show, Mr. Speaker, that on the 25th of February, on 25th February 2015, I remember, why not? In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, on 25 February 2015, the Canadian First Secretary in Charge of Development paid a visit to the then Agric Minister, Alhaji Muniru Limuna, and announced this facility and assured that the disbursement was going to start in March this year. So it, it would have hurt nothing, it would have hurt nothing if the president if the president acknowledged the contribution of the former administration. MP for Ketu South, Fifi Kwete, questioned why the president failed to acknowledge the many infrastructural projects the NDC government undertook whilst in power. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also indicate that the president is taking over a country that has got unprecedented investment and economic infrastructure. At no time in our history could we talk about entities like Ghana Port and Harbour Authority Ghana oh, Airport yeah, we'll Company, strong enough to stand on their own balance sheet and leverage financing in the region of over $1.5 billion. We left that legacy for you. And that is a beautiful time to be taking over. So you can't really be talking about an economy which is in a bad way when your government in 2008 left this country in much more deleterious and debilitating condition. That simply cannot be the truth. NPP MP for Boise East, Kweku Kwatin claimed the NDC used the energy sector levy which was meant for the clearing of debt in the energy sector to buy crude oil. It has been indicated that the energy sector levies were put together to deal with these problems. Mr. Speaker, we ought to remind ourselves that the energy sector levies were old levies in the energy sector that were consolidated. They were not the creation of anybody, but perhaps the worrying observation that we can make as a country, Mr. Speaker, is that the money that is supposed to have gone into dealing with some of the indebtedness of the energy sector in the last six months of 2016 were used to procure crude oil and gas to power our generators to pretend that somehow we have dealt with the problems of the sector because we do not have doing so. The debate is expected to continue on Friday.
So that was yesterday's proceedings in Parliament where the majority and minority were battling it out on the announcement by the President in his State of the Nation address. Moving on, the Ghana city has for the last few weeks been experiencing depreciation against the U.S. dollar, causing, causing some agitation amongst traders. For those expecting remittances, it is good news, as this would mean a lot more CDs for each dollar they exchange. But for dealers in imported items and the general public, the depreciation is causing an increase in the prices of goods. For now, you may need as much as four Ghana cities, 70 pesos, to buy one US dollar. And indications are the trend may continue for a while unless interventions by the central bank works. We've been speaking to some forex bureaus about what may be causing the depreciation. Yeah, because uh, we have some time that the people, uh, visitors normally come in the system. When they come, then the dollar will be boom. It will be too much, but at times the, when they go back and then the, the buyers buy, buy, and then it will, it will short. When it's short like this, then but we have to stabilize the price. We shouldn't increase the price. We have to maintain it. But because it's less in the system, people would rather increase their prices so that it will be going up, 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 up. That makes the dollar going high. But if the government can supply some dollars, then that, I think that one, it should come down. But, but if it goes up, that makes good business for you, isn't it? No, we don't say good business because the more we buy it, more, the more we sell it. But when it's in the system, we buy it less, we sell it less. So it's the same thing, nothing changes. But at times when the demand is too much, people try to sell it higher than normal. But it's the same thing. You buy high, you sell high. When it's low, you buy low, you sell low. Do you, do you suspect it might go up further? Mm, for now, the way I'm seeing things, it will go. If the government doesn't do anything, it will go more. But at times, normally, they used to pump some dollars into the system. When they pump like that, it will stabilize it for some time. But if they don't do it, for now, it's going. Because every morning, it's increasing. Even yesterday, today, tomorrow, still, the demand is there, so it will go high. I'll probably say it's been very slow, uh, comparing what probably we were experiencing somewhere in December or early the early, early part of January, uh, the rate has been fairly unstable. We started probably with 4.45 as against 4.6, but currently as we speak, like you can see on the board, it's 4.47 as against 4.65. Normally with anticipation that when the rate goes up like that, you have people coming to change. But I mean, from last week to now, that has been, I mean, the situation has been otherwise. We, like you have people who have dollars who would be willing to change at this rate that we have currently, but that's not the case. Probably people come in, they see the selling rate as well, they get scared and probably go away as well. Okay. So the rate is going up like you indicated. What do you think is accounting for this? Uh, people are with I mean, I'm not too sure what, I mean, much with the current government in place and all that. Do not, I'm not too sure what uh, it's a stake for them, hence their unwillingness to change the little they have and all that. Mm -hmm. People are holding on to what they have. Unlike situation where we have people thinking probably the rate might go up and that panic buying and all that, we are not experiencing that. Mm -hmm. One could easily say that might have accounted for the fairly unstable nature of the rate, but uh, I mean that's not the case as we speak now. Now moving on, industrial hubs typically come with standard infrastructure including motorable road networks with constant supply of utilities. The story at the North Industrial Area here in Accra is however far cry from this. The road network there has been in a rather deplorable state for quite some time now and duly hampering business activities. Amelia Josu brings you a situational report on this development in today's sp special Friday feature. The light industrial area is home to a cross-section of businesses ranging from small business operators to industries like Polygroup of Companies, producers of Polytank, as well as a number of banks. 
Despite the contribution of the businesses to the economy, the road system has been in a deplorable state for years compared to even nearby residential places, which can boast of asphalt roads. Ashanti Foam Ghana Limited, popularly known as Ashfoam, is one of the companies on that stretch, and the marketing and communications manager, Joe Ampimda Quinchi, laments how the situation has affected their operations. It is so frustrating, I must, I must be honest with you. Um, as a company, when the road is bad, with the big vehicles that come in, heavy duty vehicles that come in and all that, you see, there's a lot of breakages. You know, and there's wear and tear sometimes you come here and they, they, it, it creates a lot of traffic as well because of the breakage breakdowns of the, of the, of the cars. And it, it has had a lot of toll on the company. Look, our movement out, in and out, um, bringing in raw materials and even distributing, sending back the product, the time that is consumed um, and, and the inconvenience that it, it generates. So um, I can say that it, it's, it's a problem. It's, a, it's been a very big problem. But let's even look at the sad part of it. This is an industry that has a lot of people. In my company alone, we are over 800 you know, staff. And look at the, the dust that comes in daily. That's the health of, this, of the people, the workers. We pay a lot of taxes. We invest so much money in buying ties, in buying spare parts, you know, so we can fix our cars. Uh, what, what do we do? You know, at the end of the day, if you're investing so much in these things because your roads are bad, then it's either you are laying off staff so that you can meet your, you know, cost of production and other things. As at the time I was following this report, a water truck was sprinkling water on the thoroughfare to control the dust and circulation. I also witnessed other heavy-duty trucks parked nearby, ostensibly for repair works on the road, which I was told started a week ago. The branch manager of Lava Retail Shop, Isaac Enim, explained to me how the bad state of the road is negatively affecting their cost of operations and, by extension, the prices of their goods. It's giving a lot of problems simply because the customers don't really, really want to come around to buy. Secondly, the dust is also too much and it's affecting our sales value. Actually, now even our truck cannot come closer to the, in front of the shop to park for us to offload the goods. They have to park on the way for us to upload the goods. And we are selling a lot of big items, these big differences and those things. We have to carry them, and it's giving a lot of problem. Small businesses in the area are not spared a negative impact either, as they also complain having to pay more to suppliers of their items. Yes, Lord, whose shop is located along the Aveno Railway stretch of the road, is one of such affected dealers, and he explains. Uh, the area, we have a bad roads, roads around... Main thing is that the rainways. We we normally if it's rain, we can see the area with potholes. I always car bumpers uh, just come out here and the fattest more. Yes, uh, sometimes you load our goods coming around here. The trailers normally complain that the road uh, affected. So sometimes if they need to take some amount from us, they increase it because of the road, the nature of the road. Yeah, so we need the government to come in. A clarion call perhaps to the authorities at the Urban Roads Department towards giving real meaning to the tag industrial area. Many believe there has been a consistent decline in business activities at the in recent years. Fixing the roads should therefore boost not only the supply of goods and services, but also create more jobs. For Joy Business, Amelie Josu. Let's now move into the Ashanti region where former rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration Gimpa, Professor Stephen Ade, is impressing on governments the need to increase funding to research institutions to stimulate economic growth. He describes as woefully inadequate the present 0.38% of gross domestic product GDP allocated to such institutions and wants the figure to be increased at least to 1%. Professor Ade spoke to Love Business at the sidelines of a public lecture in Kumasi to launch the week celebration of Graduate Students Association of Ghana, GRASAG. Professor Stephen Adai describes as woefully inadequate the present 0.38% of gross domestic product allocated to research. There is a strong positive correlation between the amount of the proportion of GDP spent on research and development and the pace of economic development of countries well established. When one looks at the Institute of Statistics of UNESCO, which compiles this type of data 
on research and development expenditure as a percentage of GDP, almost all the economically advanced countries spend above 1%, average of about 2% of their gross domestic product, all that they produce in the country, on research and development. Ghana spends 0.38% of GDP on research. And you can see where we are there. Therefore, we must be very careful. He wants the figure to be increased from the 0.38%, which is among the least in Africa, at least to 1%. He was speaking at a public lecture in Kumasi to launch the week celebration of Graduate Students Association of Ghana. The lecture was under the theme Harmonizing Research and Entrepreneurship for National Development, the Role of the Graduate Student. Professor Adai is also advocating a national policy to ensure research from graduate education addresses specific economic challenges. And there's no national policy to direct the research to be relevant to our development. And I think that the government, first of all, is putting too little in research. 0.38% is too low. We must be moving towards about 5, 7.5. Ideally, as a middle-income country, we should be putting 1% of our GDP into research. And then there must be a policy as to the research becoming relevant to our national development so that the government will say that, look, I'm giving this amount of money, I'm expecting these areas. You, know, you can do your primary research, but these specific areas, cocoa chain system, how to get low cost but durable housing and affordable everything. We want you to come up with solutions to them. And then we are going to get some money out of our research. So we must increase the quantum of research, but the quality of research should not be research to get a degree as an end in itself, but as a development instrument. Kusi Buache is president of Kwame Nkuma University of Science and Technology chapter of Gwasag. Our vision was that we shouldn't just get postgraduate students who just uh, produce research topics and shelf them, but rather after our administration, we should be able to be bold and tell that and say that uh, we're able to support this amount, of, this amount of money to support their person. That's what we've done, and we realized that we could just transcend more into the general students' population by celebrating it as a class of week. And the impact is pretty clear now. Now people are challenged. You could even see from the questions people were asking. Now they are challenged more to, to go into entrepreneurship, or rather not just go into white color jobs, but rather set up their own businesses and maybe employ more. But Prince Apia reporting. Now efforts to encourage the youth to take over from Ghana's aging farmer population has been a major source of concern for well-meaning Ghanaians. However, this appears to be gaining some attention now. Sarah Ani Enima Tanwa, after completing an agri college, has decided to venture into crop cultivation in Akrobi near Wenji in the Bonahaf region. Nesta Ajuma Kafri spent some time with her and has filed this report. 25 year old Sarah Enima Tenwa is a product of Damango Agri College in the northern region. She did her national service as an intern with the Ministry of Agriculture in the Wenchi municipality of the Bronx Ahafo region after graduating. Driven by the passion for crop cultivation and realizing the enormous prospects that abound in farming in the region, Sarah opted not to return to her home region in Ashanti, but rather acquire land at Akrobi near Wenji to start farming. That decision, Enima says, has paid off and would encourage her peers to seriously consider farming. I chose farming because I like farming. When I was a young girl with my parents, I used to go farm with go to farm with them, reading, planting, a lot of farming activities. So I went to Agri College just to get more knowledge about farming. That will help me to do the farming activities properly. That's why I chose to be a Greek person. Yes, farming is very good aspect in life. 
because if you do it and do it properly, it's a major source of income than sitting down and waiting for government to employ you. Enima currently owns two acres of okru, two acres of maize, and an acre of pepper. She spends two hours on each of her farms daily and supports her farming activities with savings she made from her MIGA National Service Alliance. Even though the prospect of farming for the young farmer is huge, she is confronted with some challenges. Well, my greatest challenge is funding. There's not enough money for me to expand it. So I'm looking forward to uh, get support from NGOs, government organizations, individuals, so that I can expand my farm to employ people. For Enima, it is high time the youth, especially graduates, brave the odds and venture into a sector which, though very lucrative, has for many years been spurned. According to her, farming is the most ideal for young people who are struggling to better their lots in life. For Joy News, Nesta Kafui Ajuma reporting from Akrubi. And on that note, we draw down the curtains of this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for keeping us company throughout the week. My name is Emmanuel Abwaji. We have you. Let's meet again next week. Good afternoon.